On this edition of In Focus, we return to Colorado Ballet during rehearsals for their season opening production of Giselle. While it's a classical storybook ballet, it does have some unique qualities, and we'll meet with two ballet mistresses from the company to learn how they help these young dancers create this spectacular ballet. Ballet mistress Lorita Travaglia's experience with Giselle began with the Berlin Ballet. From the Court of Ballet as one of the Willies to Marta and Queen of the Willies. Her depth of experience with Giselle is incredibly valuable. While at American Ballet Theater, ballet mistress Sandra Brown danced the peasant pas de deux. And as she rose in the ranks of the company, she also danced Marta in Giselle. And these incredible women tell me about passing on their experience to the dancers at Colorado Ballet. Thank you for coming to talk to us between class and rehearsal today mm -hmm. to tell us about mounting Giselle on Colorado Ballet. It's one of my favorite ballets, but we were talking about before we started that it's not done very often, but it seems it's hit a cycle right now. Mm -hmm. What is it that appeals to you about having done and passing on Giselle? Well, Giselle is actually one of my favorite ballets as well, um, as a performer and as a um, ballet mistress and as an audience member. What makes it one of your favorites? Um, because it's really a gem within itself. It's it's so complete in itself. It's one of the what we call white ballets. Mm -hmm. So the first act is dealing with people, um, and we can relate to the story even in the 21st century. Um, Boy, can we? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love and heartbreak and all the rest of it. Jealousy. Betrayal. Um, betrayal. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yes, and then the second act is, is the white part, where it deals with um, otherworldly people. In this case, it's the willies, mm -hmm. and they are um, ethereal creatures. And is that, what, is that what one means when one says white ballet? Is well, the, the second act is it? white, mm -hmm. yes. All in tutus yeah. and... Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, the music is beautiful, it's very moving. It's not a terribly long ballet like Sleeping Beauty or Swan Lake. Um, and so it, you get everything in a, a fairly short amount of time. It, it doesn't add on lots of divertissement. It no. tells the story. Tells the story, exactly, yes. How about for you? I feel pretty much the same way. It's also one of my favorites. Sorry. <laughs> and um, uh, through the years, dancing all the different roles, you know, coming, coming around now and staging it, I have a very deep understanding of every element of the ballet, what's needed for the dancing aspect as well as the mime. And uh, again, and I And when you love say mime, we'll, we're talking about the, the acting without the acting. dialogue. And yes. uh, this ballet in particular has quite a bit of acting in it, and I think that's why it also appeals to me, the theatricality of it, mm -hmm. as well as the technical uh, challenges in it, which is really great for our dancers. Technically, they have to really be very strong, but they also have to know how to act mm -hmm. on top of that. So it, it gives them a full gamut of uh, in their career as well to to stretch their artistry. Even and on contemporary outlets like So You Think You Can Dance, they're mm -hmm. often challenged to act, mm -hmm. to yes. portray a character, yes. whether or not there's a, a linear story in the piece or mm -hmm. not. So that that's that foundation that they're going to have with classical yes. dance. Mm -hmm. And also in, in Giselle, it's, uh, the dancing is a little bit different too in that it's not about the technique, mm -hmm. and it requires, especially the second act, a quality of movement, which uh, isn't called for in the other ballets. Mm -hmm. How would you describe it's the quality of movement? Well, it has to be, you know, otherworldly, ethereal. Mm -hmm. um, the willies are spirits, so they don't have any bones. They have to move in a very um, diaphanous way, and we don't have that so much in other other productions. Even the spine is called to be held differently in slightly this ballet. Forward, than, right. Slightly forward, pulling, pulling yes. you onto the stage. And, and the beauty of the ballet is not about the technical virtuosity, whereas in other ballets there's usually one part or several parts that calls for really um, incredible acrobatic type dancing, lots mm -hmm. of pirouettes, huge jumps. We need the jump and the technique in Giselle, but it's it's not it's more understated. Much more subtle than much most more of subtle. our other So I feel like it, it's much more layered. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that's what makes it actually a challenge. It's one of those that, more interesting. Yes. that highlights the beauty of dance as a collaboration between dancers who are performing and dancers along history. Even the age of video, where we can see a performance, they're saying about understanding and passing it on mm -hmm. to another dancer. That's very mm -hmm. different than other art forms. Tell me about doing that with Colorado Ballet and for this ballet in particular. It's, it's interesting actually that you mentioned that because we've talked about that a lot in the studio. When I learned this ballet, it was just my coaches teaching me and what I've seen previously over the years when I finally got to do a leading role in it, so, uh, over the years seeing other dancers doing those leading roles and how they portrayed the character. And nowadays we have YouTube Mm -hmm. And places to go on the internet where people are watching ballerinas, you know, at the Kirov and at the Bolshoi and at the Royal. How did they do it? Mm -hmm. Where back before it was just what our coaches would teach mm -hmm. us. And so now we have this huge uh, library in front of us of, well, I want to do it this way, it I want to do it this mm -hmm. way. Multiple versions. Mm -hmm. And so we have to kind of hone it in, I feel, as ballet mistresses and choose, this is the way we really, there are multiple ways to do this, yes, but this is the way that looks best here on Colorado Ballet, on our company, this is the way that Gil, uh, the director, feels that it needs to be portrayed. Mm -hmm. And we sit down and collaborate with Gil and each other, figuring out what is the best way for our company and for our dancers and what looks right on them. Mm -hmm as well as with some of the dancers, especially the principals, when they say, oh, I don't feel comfortable doing it this way, could I do it this way? So usually it's, it's uh, a work in progress and a collaboration, and not everybody's going to do it the same. It also, I think, helps that artist become, to own that role more mm -hmm. and understand it differently than merely imitating what they may have exactly. seen on a video. Right, exactly, and that's, so I was about You're to say that. You're talking about the psychology behind the role, the, yes. the reason for the carriage change, mm -hmm. all of that. So rather than attempting to look like this ballerina that was that they liked on YouTube, it's more about finding out within themselves with the help of us. Mm -hmm. This is yes that it becomes their own role as well, opposed they own to um, mm -hmm. a duplicate of somebody else. Well, I'm so excited. This is the opening of this season, yes. and I'm delighted that we have this special little glimpse into how it's created by hearing from you two lovely ballet mistresses mm -hmm. here at Colorado Ballet, and I know that they're waiting for you to get back there. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Welcome. Thanks. Tickets for Giselle are already available on their website, coloradoballet.org. And don't forget to visit our Facebook page and enter for your chance to win a Roku streaming player, a great way not to miss an episode of In Focus. <laughs>